Welcome. In this session in Linear Data Analysis, we'll explore Principal Components Analysis, or PCA, using our simple data set. Let's recall what we mean by PCA and scores. So the first loading vector in PCA is the eigenvector that's associated with the largest eigenvalue of the covariance matrix. And what this does, it effectively weights the ith zero mean observation by the numbers that are in the vector. So if we take the ith zero mean observation, which is uh, in our matrix M, that what we're doing is we're effectively calculating a weighted sum of these observations, and the weights are coming from the entries of this eigenvector. We'll call the score for the ith observation as Z sub i. And we can compute all of these for component one at once by taking our zero mean matrix, multiplying it by the eigenvector, and, or the, which is the principal loading vector, and that gives us the first score. So the first PCA component is the first column of the spectral decomposition, and that's the same as the first eigenvector of the um, covariance matrix. So it's important to remember all of these equalities is that the first column of the spectral decomposition and the first eigenvector are the same. So when we computed this, we got approximately 0 0.5, 0 0.5, 0 0.7. If we then take this and we then score the zero mean version of our data, this is what we get. And we see that three of these numbers are pretty close to zero, and one is significantly positive and one is significantly negative. Well, we could repeat this process using the second uh, score. And this would be using the second PCA component, or second loading vector, and the latent variable, which was the eigenvalue, that in a previous session we found it might contain some variance, but we really weren't sure. So when we do the computation, what we see is that one number is close to zero, and then there are two numbers that are slightly positive and two numbers that are slightly negative. This is not nearly as compelling a pattern as we found in the first score. Let's try using MATLAB to plot these. When we do so, this is what we see, is that here um, uh, there, the vertical uh, value is really immaterial. And what we're seeing is we have a cluster of these three that are um, very close to zero, and then there's one that's significantly negative, and there's one that's significantly positive. So that's what we get if we use just the first score. When we add the second score, we add a second dimension to our plot. And here what we're seeing is that these first ones are being spread out a little bit, and these others have been pushed to be slightly negative. But really, this has not substantially changed our picture. What we see visually is we have a central cluster and two outliers. We can conclude that uh, based off of our numerical evidence and off of our visual confirmation that one dimension suffices uh, for an analyzing these data. So what that means is that we can just use a single score to capture most of the performance of these fictitious students. Now, let's recall linear regression and compare this to PCA. In linear regression, we were given some data, and these data the, in this case, the horizontal axis is our independent variable, and the vertical axis is our dependent variable. When we do that regression, what we're doing is we're calculating, in effect, the vertical distance. And we're trying to minimize the sums of the squares of these vertical distances. That's how linear regression works. Graphically, what is PCA doing in two dimensions? Well, what we're now doing is we're saying that now the horizontal dimension and the vertical dimension, both of those are independent, okay? And so when we say that they're both independent, preferring one as a vertical error doesn't make sense. What we should really do is we should be calculating what's called the orthogonal error. That is, what we want to do is find the sum of the squares of the errors from each of these data to the best fitting line. That is, in effect, what PCA is doing. This is not a new concept. All of this goes back to 1901 in a foundational paper by the great statistician mathematician Carl Pearson. This is one of the um, illustrations, one of the figures from his 1901 paper, and he's expressing exactly what we just went through. And he went further, is he 
noted that if we regress one variable against the, another, or we regress the other variable against the first, we'll get two different regression lines. And that PCA is effectively giving us this middle line, and here he's drawing an ellipse, and this ellipse has a major axis that is the first principal component we find from PCA, and then the minor axis of this ellipse is the second component that we find from PCA for these data. So, what have we learned in this lecture? Well, we're now able to find explained variance by using latent variables. We can find the principal component or components of our data. And we now understand how to compute scores of data using principal components analysis.